Editing internal animation BVH files in Blender for avatars. A long time ago in a grid far, far away, Linden Labs gave away the sources to all of the internal animations in their viewer. These are documented here in this wiki page. And I have a link to this in the description of this video. It has the, the walk and the, the fly and the run animations. Linden Labs probably gave these away as examples on how to, how to build animations for Second Life. These animations can be downloaded from a zip file that's hidden here on this page under the word here. I assume you know how to download a zip file and how to open it and how to copy it onto your hard drive. Because the next step I'm going to show you is how to just read one of those from uh, Blender. These uh, animation files are very, very old. They use bone names that Linden Labs uh, no longer uses, that the viewer doesn't use, and uh, many people have never even heard these bone names. Fortunately, the viewer will still recognize these names. Many of these animations that you get for free here have very strange frame rates. They're like designed to be run at 14 frames per second instead of the default 24. They don't have the bento finger and face bones. There are a lot of animations in here for expressions, but uh, they are for the original uh, an uh, avatar and they don't work on mesh uh, avatars. They don't have a T-pose in the first keyframe. Like the documentation elsewhere says, every uh, BVH animation file is required to have a T-pose, and, and most of these do not. So I think that's, that means the T-pose was added later, and uh, they never went back and fixed their original BVH files. And the animations in here that are supposed to loop don't have the first and the last keyframe identical, like the documentation elsewhere says that every uh, looping animation must have. These last two issues of um, not having a T-pose and not having the start and end of a loop correct uh, causes these animations to skip and jerk. And that perhaps explains why people don't like the default walk. They call it the duck walk. However, these do serve as examples and starting points for making your own animations. And it turns out that Blender, well, especially Blender uh, 3.0, can read these BVH files. You can edit them with Blender and you can uh, make your own new animations using these as a guide. So uh, I, th I think this is worth learning how to do. So here we are in Blender. I want to uh, get rid of this default cube. If you go to File and Import, you're supposed to have Motion Capture BVH files as an option for import. If you don't have that, it means you have to go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons. You can search for BVH. And the only thing that comes up is Import Export BioVision Motion Capture BVH Format. If uh, this isn't checked, all you have to do is make sure that, that this checkbox is checked. And then the next time you hit File, your Import and Export menu items will have an option to load Motion Capture BVH files. So I'm going to uh, import one of these. I'm going to uh, demonstrate uh, mucking about with BVH files with the Avatar Run. So I'm just going to click on that. Unfortunately, the, uh, the options over here, I recommend you uh, leave them all alone on Import. Now, holy Toledo, the animation loaded a, an armature with it, but it's huge, like, uh, 10 meters tall. Well, it turns out that BVH files are measured in inches, and Blender comes from a, uh, a modern country that uses the metric system, and so it uses meters. And so every inch in a BVH file turns into a meter in Blender. You can fix this. So I recommend you just leave this guy uh, uh, as giant-sized and we'll just make do with editing it large and it will get saved back into inches and then everything will work right again. 
you come up in object mode when you load a BVH file, the very first thing you should do, rotate, object, transform, rotate, which is the letter R, rotate this thing in Z only 90 degrees. Why do you do that? Because the standard avatar and the standard vehicles and everything else in Second Life assumes that forward is the positive X direction. Unfortunately, when you rotate, well, fortunately, when you rotate things in object mode, it rotates everything, including the animations. But unfortunately, it doesn't actually rotate them. It just remembers they're supposed to be rotated. And if you look at uh, the item, you'll see that here's what he's remembering. It's been rotated 90 degrees. You need to go into object mode and apply rotations to force the object to actually be rotated 90 degrees. And now he'll say the rotation that he remembered is zero. So this thing is, is in fact, facing down the x-axis. It's not just remembering it was supposed to be down the x-axis. So um, I'm going to have to select my object again because I want to go into pose mode now. And then again, once I get into pose mode, I want to uh, select all to select all of my bones. And the first reason I want to select all of my bones is down here is the timeline. When uh, you have selected all your bones and you're looking at the timeline, you'll see all of the frames in your animation uh, light up orange. And you can use the, uh, the scroll bar, and I'm using the, the middle mouse button to zoom the reason we want to see our uh, all of the frames in our animation is that there's another bug in the BVH uh, importer that it doesn't load the number of frames, even though I happen to know that BVH files have number of frames in them. So you can go here on the, uh, on the timeline and you can type in, I see there's uh, 14 frames in this animation. You can go to the output uh, panel on the properties panel, the output properties panel, and you'll see he has the frame rate here, he has the frames per second, he has the start and the end, and you can change the start and the end here, and it has the same effect as changing it down on the timeline. Now that we, we have the right number of frames, we can hit play and we can watch our animation run. And while it's running, you can do other things like look at it from different angles. I think he's running a little fast. So you can go into the, uh, the output properties. You can say custom and you can change this to, um, to, I think it was designed to run a little slower. So I set that to 14. I think that looks better. For today, I'm just going to save it back out as a BVH file and show you all of those steps because it's not straightforward and let's do that first and then uh, we'll come back uh, tomorrow with another animation and we'll actually make some changes to this for example i happen to know that this run animation has two count them two bugs in it maybe three and we'll fix those tomorrow but for today all we're going to do is now that we have our, uh, our animation working looks pretty good we're going to go into the file, export, motion capture BVH, and we're going to give it uh, a name. I'm going to call it Old Run. But before I hit save, I'm going to go up here. Here's where you would change the scale if you wanted to convert it back to inches. Um, I think you're always going to have to ask for Euler XYZ in the rotation. This rotation option has a bug. It doesn't do what, you w what we wish it would do, but um, you always have to set it to XYZ. I highly recommend you always set a root translation only. If you forget, the BVH file will be bigger, and that's not a problem, but... Uh, Doing trans translating bones is uh, an advanced uh, subject. And in an avatar, the bones hardly ever translate. They only rotate. So after you've set those two things, chosen a name, oh, chosen a location, you can hit export BVH. 
Now, if you recall from my other videos, I insist on using Blender with things like the avatar facing in the standard direction, the positive X direction, which is the direction the avatar is facing when you set your rotation to zero. But BVH files and, uh, and several other files uh, have different coordinate systems. And so my solution to this is I insist on working in my native coordinate system, namely the OpenSim Second Life coordinate system. But since the BVH files have a different coordinate system, you have to convert. I'm going to go to my OpenSim folder. I'm going to look for that uh, old, old run.bvh file. And I'm going to open it in a text editor. I want to find every occurrence of X, Y, and Z rotation, and I want to replace it with Z, X, Y rotation. Why am I doing this? Because that was the orientation the BVH files were originally written in. The viewer is going to scramble that for us to get the BVH orientation into the OpenSim orientation. We have to scramble our data so that when uh, the viewer unscrambles it, it goes back to where we wanted it. I know it's terrible. Replace all. There are 21 occurrences of that in uh, these BVH files. So then you can hit save. So here I am in world and I want to upload that animation that we just made. Hmm. Old run for testing purposes, high priority. It is a loop. Frame one is supposed to be the T frame. Frame two is where all animations are supposed to start. So if we tell him to start the loop at frame one, is he going to start at frame two, do the loop once, and then go back to frame one? It's unclear. The documentation doesn't explain it. We'll have to fix this later. But at any rate, let's try telling him that it runs from one to 14, and we can hit play here, and it looks like we correctly made and then saved this animation. I don't know if you can tell, but it kind of has a jump there where the right foot kind of jerks, and that is one of the bugs in this built-in animation. You can see yourself animating here because you're playing it in the viewer, but if your friends were watching you right now in World, they would see you just standing there, and this player that's built into the viewer is missing a few features, and so it's best to upload the animation and then to uh, open it and play it here. And some other features like what the animation does when you stop it and how it interacts with other animations will now work correctly. So um, he still has the jerk where the foot slaps down. But I think when we stop it, he smoothly goes back to the last animation. That's good. So we were successful. And as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to save editing moving keyframes around, fixing these bugs. I'm going to save that for another video tomorrow. That is the end of the lesson for today.